In the previous video, we have seen how to create the global default error handler for the application. In this video, we will create a user collection by defining a model so we can assign each to-do to a particular user. That way each user will have their own to-dos and is separate for each individual user. So let's create a user.js file to define a user model. First, we will import the mongoose library. Now, we can define user schema. For each user, we will have name field. It's of type string. And it's also required field. We can also add trim and max length for it. In addition to name, we will have email field of type string. We can also add a unique property so no two users will have the same email address. And if we try to enter the same email, Mongoose will throw an error. We can also add a password field of type string again. We will make it required field. Let's make email also a required field. Now we can define a user model using mongoose.model method. We will name the model user and we will provide the user schema as the second parameter. Now we can export this user model so we can use it in other files. Let's add user controller code now. So we have to do specific code in to do.js and we will add user specific controller code in user.js file. So let's add add user function which will receive request, response and next as the parameter. We can create a user object here using new user. We have already seen this in add to do function, so I'm not explaining it again. We will import the user model. And we will pass whatever data we're sending in the request body. Now we can save this user using save method of the user instance. And we can return the saved user using the response.send method. And whenever we're doing add operation, make sure to send back status code of 201. In the case of error, we will send back the error message. Error while adding user. Try again later. Now we can export this add user function. As we can have multiple functions in this file, we're exporting it in an object. Now, let's add a root for adding a new user. I will remove the unnecessary code from this file. And here, we will use add users function. And add user is imported at the top of the file. Now we can import this roots file in index.js file. We can call it user roots. And we will add new app.use for the user roots. So whenever we access slash API slash users, our user roots will be executed. Now let's send a new request from Postman to add a user. It will be post request, and URL will be slash API slash users. Now select body, raw, and then JSON option. And here we will provide values for name, email, and password properties.
And if we send the request, we're getting error, cannot post, because we need to mention the root as post request instead of get. And now, if we resend the request, you can see, user is created successfully. Let's check the database to verify the newly added user. As you can see, it's correctly added in the database. If you notice, we're storing the password without encrypting it, which is not good. In the API response also, we get password that is not encrypted. So we should not store the password in the database as it is. So to hash the password, we can use a very popular NPM library. It uses a hashing algorithm to hash the password. It's also a very popular library. So let's install it first so we can use it in our application. It will be added in the dependencies section. Now in the user controller, we can add import for the library. Now we can say hash password equal to await bcrypt.hash. The hash method returns a promise, so we're using await keyword. Now, for this hash method, we need to pass the string to hash and the number or salt value. So we will pass request.body.password as the value to hash. So whatever password we're entering while sending the data will be stored in request.body.password. And for the second parameter, we will pass 8 as the value, which is the recommended value by the library to create strong password. Now instead of passing request.body, we will spread out all its properties, and then we will specify the hashed password. Make sure the property name is password, because in the model, we have specified it as password. So we're spreading out all other properties like name and email, and then we're specifying the hashed password. And that user we're saving in the database using save method. Now let me delete the previously added user with plain text password. And if I send the request again, you can see now we get the hashed password back instead of the plain text password. You can verify that in the database also. Let me add another user now with different password. As you can see, we get different hashed password this time. So now with the hashed password, even if someone gets access to your database, he will not be able to see your original password. That's it for this video. In the upcoming lessons, we will see how to add authentication to this application, and we will also add a relationship between the user and to-do so each to-do will be associated with a particular user. If you found this video useful, do like it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.